uh, something that our next guest may agree with because she is bullish uh, also on health care stocks. Jill Cuniff is president of Edge Asset Management with over $20 billion in assets under management. Uh, Jill with us as well as Dominic uh, and John. And you're, you're shaking your head. You're saying yes, you agree with that, yeah, right? we are bullish right now. We think there's great opportunities in the market and we like health care. Uh, why health care? Well, a couple of reasons. We think that with QE2 ending, that the economy is going to struggle a little bit, but we're still thinking we're in a sustainable recovery. It's just not your typical recovery that we've seen in, in past uh, recoveries, where GDP is typically 4 to 5%. We're right. going to be in more of a 25 to 3% growth mode. And so without the Fed injecting liquidity into the market, it's going to be a little bit choppier, a little bit of a bumpy ride, but a little bit of a slow grind coming out of this, this environment. But if it's a slow grind and we're going to, it's going to take a while to come out of this environment isn't the case to be made for bonds versus stocks right now. But yields are so low, right? So 10-year tre Treasury is trading at, what, 3.1, uh, 0 percent at money markets. And you think about how many people are invested in fixed income. They're earning nothing on that money, and there's a lot of potential. Interest rates will rise at some point. It'll be longer term, but they will rise at some point. Well, uh, El Arian would argue, Mohammed El Arian would argue that you're actually getting a negative rate of return in the bond market. So th That's true. There you go. But, but you're owning health care stocks because of the yield. I mean, that's a group that's already had for in healthcare I mean it's had a big run compared to the rest of the market this year and there are other people who say people are just parking their cash there and then waiting to get back into the other stuff later. Well, we are long-term investors, and dividend income strategies really are a long-term play for people that are looking to bridge out of fixed income into equities because it offers a great yield. A gross yield in the range of 4% right now, as I said, with the Treasury at 3.1, there's a real opportunity there. And with health care, you're right. They were beaten down so much last year, and valuations were great for us to come in, take advantage of that opportunity, and build our positions. But, that was something that we were talking with Bill Fleckenstein earlier this week about, which is that, you know, his argument had been that, you know, if you're not making money in plain vanilla dividend-paying stocks, then you're not going to make money in, you know, in the rest of the markets. And the fact of the matter is that you haven't made a whole lot of money, though, in some of the dividend-paying stocks. But a 4% yield is really attractive to, again, the people that are sitting in fixed income. Well, how much of that is demographic? We talk about this aging population that we have right now. So many baby boomers, if they're not already in retirement, moving into retirement mm -hmm. in the next few years here. Mm -hmm. Is this a secular trend that we could see paying out or plan panning out rather for, for years to come because people are just getting older and needing that dividend income now? Well, there's, there's two opportunities here. Certainly domestically with the aging demographics, that's a definitely a long-term trend, right? Um, and then the companies that we're investing in, some of these healthcare stocks, they're investing in their they're taking advantage of overseas markets where the emerging markets are moving into the middle class, right? So there's a lot of growth potential, especially for healthcare companies that offer vaccines. Like Glaxo? Like GlaxoSmithKline, uh, um, uh, Novartis, those okay. are really entrenched into those markets. So it offers a really interesting growth opportunity for dividend income strategies. Uh, one thing that you mentioned about dividends is that you actually think technology companies are going to start paying out dividends. Well, look at Cisco. They started this year, right? First time ever. And there's certainly big tech names, Microsoft, Intel, that have always offered a dividend. And we do hold them in our portfolio. But if you think about tech and their changing maturity of just that sector, that looking to attract new investors, but then they're you're looking starting at the Googles, you're looking at the Apples. Yeah, I mean, we're, the we're, Yahoo's, we're, maybe? we're waiting and we're taking our time and looking at what they're going to do. I, we want to see companies that have a capacity and a commitment for long-term dividend growth. But are so, you surprised they haven't because they are sitting on so much cash, tens of billions of dollars? Well, that's why we like the sector and we think that the trends long-term are going to be good. But we still want them to be issuing a dividend before we add them to the portfolio. But where tech hasn't historically, they've sort of picking up some interesting momentum versus financials. Mm. Financials, from a dividend strand, standpoint, have really struggled with the market downturn. They've cut dividends, they have limited right. di dividends, so we've, we're underweight financials, okay. but thinking that tech might take their place. Jill, thank you very much thank for joining us. Thank you so us. much.